and you're just like, oh, okay, you know. I get the vo you got to get that natural radio voice going. All right. That's, uh... Yeah, you know, I'm used to my old natural radio voice, but that's also because you got to remember, I used to podcast back in the day before everybody had a podcast. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, oh, okay, got what I in doing all this shit. And it's like, oh, okay, you got something going on here. It's like, do I have something to say? Now I have something to say. Didn't really have something to say before. So it was pretty much fucking obnoxious, to say the very least. All right. Well, oh, shit. I have I did press record. <laughs> nice. So we are here. We are back once again, bringing you a New Year's spectacular this time. So we will spend our New Year's talking about the best and worst. Movies, TV shows, Mike, a little, bit of, wrestling, but not little bit of wrestling, and I have a best and worst list for anime at, of 2022, and let's get everything rolling. I am the Blue Dragoon himself, Daniel the Dragon, and with me is King Hamster the Pellet himself, Mike the Alpha. You gotta speak up, because I can't hear a fucking thing you're saying. I said I am the Remember. That microphone, turn it to the side. No, it, there you go. <laughs> I am, once again, the king hamster pellet himself. Now there we go. blown Danny's eardrums out. Well, now I can actually hear you. <laughs> so, okay, so, how was your Christmas, Danny? Well, I spent it at work, but I did see you for Christmas Eve, so. The that, that keep on giving. Yeah. <laughs> No, I walked away with a, a good amount of food. Fuck I yeah. I think I still have some left over. But you probably yeah. do. Look, I'm Italian, so I I did the typical Italian thing. I made too much food. Yeah, but you didn't do the feast of seven fishes, thankfully, because I, uh -huh. I eat fish, but fi that no, is a lot of fish. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is the Dragoons Lair podcast where we talk about entertainment and whatever kind of strikes my fancy, since it's my fucking show. But, you know, since nobody wants to write in and email anything, um, yeah, I'm asking you guys, give us something to talk about. Recommend something that we should watch. But nobody wants to do anything, so since no one is responding, I will say it again. You can email us at dragoonslairpodcast at gmail.com. That's all one word. Dragoon is spelled with two O's. That's dragoonslairpodcast at gmail.com. Give us some recommendations. Tell us something you want us to see, something you want us to talk about. I mean, I went to sleep last night with some great, hilarious news, and that was just more like that jackass Andrew Tate got arrested. Him, his brother, I'm like, king of the incels has been arrested. That, to me, was hilarious. All because, and you could probably say something about this because... You've worked in the education department, so you understand that you don't fuck with kids nowadays. No, you can't. And what got Andrew Tate busted? He went and decided he was going to go after Greta Thunberg, the activist. This girl has, she's on the spectrum. It's like, are you kidding me? You're coming after, a, she may be 19 years old, but she's a child, basically. Mm -hmm. And she owned his ass. Talked about all the cars, all the emission shit he's got. And it's like, where do I send it? She's like, you can, send, you can email that to me at Little Dick Energy. Uh, so it's like, when she's sending out and telling you, like, in a tweet, you can send that to Small Dick Energy. At, you're like, oh, fuck. Pissed him off that he sent a video response. And in that response, they busted him because the pizza delivery box that he got guaranteed them oh they were like oh he's here they knew where it was from the pizza location <laughs> i'm like you don't fuck with these kids nowadays no, you, you can't look at them sideways because it'll offend someone and i am so i mean look you used to be able to joke around with kids in school you're joking around haha uh -huh, yeah okay knock it off whatever and kids took it as a joke and you walked away, you went to your next class, you move on, that was the end of it. Now, you can't say, how are you, to a kid, because you might offend them, because they might be having a bad day, 
How are you? I'm offended. Why would you say that? And then the the teacher gets written up, and it's a whole bunch of bullshit. But I don't want to get into that because I want to be in a good mood today. Yeah, but but it it is one of the funniest things in the world when the king of the incels, the guy who says, "Oh, have you ever seen a woman do anything competently?" I'm like, actually, yes, yeah. Um, but apparently you weren't raised right. Yeah. So, but it's like, oh, women are always the problem. It's like. No, it's jackasses. Yeah, like, you are the real the fucking problem. problem. Yeah, it's like, when I see somebody who's a complete douchebag like that, it's like, it's nice to see the comeuppance, like, really just strike down that chord of, like, <laughs> <laughs> you and Dick. your brother got arrested, and it it's like, oh, they're looking into it for assault, rape, like, using women to mm. be cam girls, and, like putting them under pressure, scrutiny, all this shit to manipulate them so he could make money off of them. It's like, you know, if these charges stick, I am going to die laughing all because Twitter's lord and master Elon Musk put this dickwad back on Twitter. And it's like, you know, Twitter used to be fun. You know, I used to be able to see a whole bunch of shit, find out movie stuff, find out where people were at conventions. Now it's filled with a bunch of, oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah. So, you know, Twitter has been the worst. And I will give it the all-time shit show crown for 2022 was Twitter. Because Elon Musk dominated making that the worst. And he did it in, a, in less than a month. Hey, he, he knows what he was doing. You gotta, kinda, give, you gotta give him credit for, for doing that, though. I don't think he did, considering that this is a guy that, you know, you make and sell electric cars, and yet you're pissing off the your clientele base that would buy the electric cars, so now it's like, hey, what other company is coming out with electric cars? Oh, wait, that's all of the auto manufacturers. You know what? <laughs> but when the dude, when you have Elon Musk money, do you really give a shit? Yeah, but the thing is, he's on the spectrum. He can't use his disability as an excuse for this. So it's like, no, money only proves who you are. You know, if you don't have money and you're a decent person, no one you, gives a shit. you get money though, and you'll be more of a decent person. Mm. But when you go and you're an asshole, you're going to be an even bigger asshole because now you have the money to back it up. Yeah, you can afford to be a bigger asshole. I mean, hell, I mean, think about it. The Big Bang Theory. It, they made fun of Raj not being able to speak to women, but when he could speak when he was drunk, it's like, yeah, it's like, is he this much? It's like, I'd hate to be around him if he's going to be this much of a dick. It's like, no, he's like this even when he's not drinking. Yeah. <laughs> so it really goes to prove that it's like money doesn't change you. It just shows who the fuck you really are. It's like alcohol. We're not the asshole on everybody. Unless you're a happy drunk, and then happy drunk, yeah. Th those are the people I love hanging out with. Oh, I get I get talkative <laughs> when I get drunk. I talk about the most ridiculous shit. Yeah, I like what we do right now. Yeah, but I'm sober. But yeah, and we're not recording it, which is not, which we should. What? Yeah, when you were when you're recording drunk people is always the it's most always fun. The yeah. So with that said, now, how do you want to start off with the lists? Do you want to do TV or do you want to do movies? Um... Let's start off with TV because I didn't have too many. Like, I have about five on each. The way I did my list, I did, um, we have the best TV and movies of 22. We have the worst TV and movies of 22. We have the why. As in, why would this be made of 22? And we have the meh of 22. See, for the meh, for me, it's like, okay, you're sitting in a doctor's office. You're waiting to get circumcised. You see a movie on, oh, let me just watch that until I get, you know, until I get clipped. <laughs> All um, right. Or or in Danny's case, you know, you're sitting in the doctor's office waiting to get the added dick to me surgery done. Let me, let me watch this. I got a few minutes to kill. Cute, cute. All right. All right <laughs> cute. So but, let's, um, let's start but with let, TV let, shows. Let's start with your lists okay. because I did my list slightly differently. Okay. And my list is basically best, worst, and I did a mid-tier. But there's also a few things that it's like, I was more disappointed because things got canceled, right. which is why sometimes things ended up in mid tier. But kind of like, like a realm in Asgard. We're going to mid tier now. Yeah, pretty much. But it was like you know, with the acquisitions and everything, that things getting canceled left and right. It was like there were things that were good or could have been good, and now we'll never know right. if they were going to get bad. Right. 
because they could have started off great or started off shitty. We don't know. So yeah. your best. Let's start okay. with your best. Right now, it's just my TV shows. And I only did five of them. Okay. Best TV shows, in my opinion, of 22. That you've seen. That because I've seen. We're, we're, let's put a warning on uh, the caveat warning on this right now. Because we've both seen different shows. Mm hmm. So our opinions are going to be different from each other's, mm -hmm. along with the fact that anyone listening is going to have a different right. opinion. And if they disagree with this opinion, write in, let us know, send Come us on. your list. This is where you get to clap back. So let's go. Best. This, this is in no specific order. Just TV shows, the 22, my best top five. Willow. All right. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Okay. She Hulk. Wow, I I thoroughly enjoyed She Hulk. I was not expecting that from you. I like it was funny. I went into it with an open mind, which is no, the way you're supposed to go supposed into to, it. I knew I knew a little bit about the character from the comic books, but I was like, okay, let's see how they run with it. I watched it. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Okay. I I'm and impressed with that one. I was not I was not expecting yeah. that. Completely enjoyed it. Can't okay. Wait, hopefully, to the season two. Uh, number four, Invincible. I liked it. Okay, but that was in 2022. Actually, technically, neither was Obi-Wan. They both well, came out in 2021. The ass end of 21, beginning of 22? All right, I'll give you a little slack on that, because okay. I, when I was looking through my list, I literally looked up online to make sure things came out in 2022. So, And even though it came out, this is a, a current ongoing show. So I, I kind of counted that. Okay. Titans. I, I like what they're doing. I like where they're going. Okay. Um, I, I, left, I like the characters. Yeah, I left Titans and Doom Patrol off my list, but that's only because Titan season isn't finished. Right. And it's a ongoing series, so it's like coming right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I also did leave out, like, I left out Doom Patrol for the same reason, because it's well, currently still going. Well, when we said about, you know, I just thought, you know, like yeah. current season, because yeah. the show started... Two, three years ago, Titans. Yeah, but I, I just, I just figured, okay, it's a current season. Okay, could have made the good or bad list. Yeah, I, I can see where you were coming from with that. It was more, like I said, for me, it was more the list of just in twenty twenty two. Right. So, okay. Okay. Worst TV shows. I only have two. Cause, you know, you don't watch much TV. I don't watch much TV. <laughs> uh, Resident Evil. I gave it a shot. I'm like, what the hell am i watching the back and forth between post-apocalyptic and apocalyptic i was like you're i i got motion sickness i'm like you're confusing the shit out of me um it could you possibly have played the video game before you decide to write <laughs> the tv so just get a little backstory of who these characters are you know, okay but you know what it, i i know it was a different direction that they took for the show and it was canceled, like, virtually immediately six, after a release. Six episodes in, I believe. Well, it, you figure it was a Netflix show, so it yeah, was a so. dump the whole thing, and it was like, you're never seeing this again. No. So, I can see where you're coming from with that no. one. What, what's the other one? Uh, Blockbuster Night. Blockbuster Night? Or Blockbuster the, the series? Nah, I, it was like the night at Blockbuster. It, it basically, what it is, it's like, they're reliving people going to Blockbuster and renting movies. Well, that was just Blockbuster on Netflix, wasn't it? It was either Blockbuster. I thought it was. I thought the title was Blockbuster Night. Was it the one with Randall Park? I believe so. Then that's Blockbuster. Yeah. Okay. I really liked Blockbuster. It didn't make my list, mm -hmm. but it was one that I really enjoyed because it. But that was also the nostalgia factor, right? Which is why it it didn't make my list. Okay, I mean, I was like, I I enjoyed going to Blockbuster to rent movies. I enjoyed seeing what was out, and just I liked more going into like the more like obscure instead of the new releases, like the back issues, like the back releases. Well, and, yeah, you're you're around. you're more of a classic guy yeah. anyway. I mean, your television habits are classic television yes. that's going to be one of the reasons why your list is going to be a little shorter yeah um oh. the why of 22 didn't really have any the meh of 22 where i kind of went either way like i started watching it didn't put it in the worst in the worst category but just couldn't really hold my attention all too much and or really yeah i started watching it i gave it a shot couldn't get couldn't get hooked i was like okay 
Okay. Moon Knight. Again, I gave it. A, I gave it a fair shake. I gave it a couple episodes. Couldn't. Once again, it. though, twenty twenty one, not twenty twenty two. Uh, the on NBC going regular TV now. The Quantum Leap reboot. Oh, I knew this was coming from you. I had a feeling about I, this one. I liked the premise. Okay, where they're redoing the Quantum Leap project. Uh, it's not when I when I first heard they were doing Quantum Leap. I'm like, don't tell me they're erasing everything because you have a show like that. Don't erase. You can't erase its past. That's the same mistake where the 2016 Ghostbusters went. You erase their past. You can't yep. do that. But these guys said, no, we're not erasing the past. Sam Beckett is still jumping around in time. They're doing it and. From what I heard, they were going to try to possibly find Dr. Beckett. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I gave it like four, three, four episodes. And I was like, you know what? It's either something else is on that I'm watching or I forget that it's on. Yeah, it, it was at a, it's at a time slot that it's Mondays. very easily like missable. I don't think they had a lot of faith in that. Yeah. Okay, was there anything else? And uh, Resident Alien. Really? Yeah, I, you know, I mean, it's one of those ones where I mean, if it's on, I watch it. Man, I'm I not going to go out of my way to... It's uh, an ongoing right. series, so that's why it's not it's not on my list. But there's something about Alan Tudyk that just makes me want to watch stuff mm-hmm. with him. And, I mean, it's Alan Tudyk. Right. I mean, he again, is he is hilarious. Not saying he's not, I'm not putting a knock on the show. It's just one of those shows where I'm not going out of my way to sit my fat ass down in a chair and watch it. <laughs> Okay. Okay, let me get your TV show. Okay, my TV shows. All right. Now, I don't I didn't put this in any particular order, but we're going to go I'm just going to start off like pretty much as the year was coming along okay. unless I move things around when I was making my list, but number 1, Peacemaker. As in you like? Oh, I loved Peacemaker. Peacemaker is be- of the best. Peacemaker was up there. The I can never skip that theme song. The soundtrack was amazing. And John Cena is hilarious as Peacemaker. Yes. And seeing him back with Robert Patrick, because it's not the first time they've worked together. The very first Marine movie. Why? I, I Robert try to, Patrick. I try to block that yeah, out. You know what? I don't block that one out because it was the first. It's yeah. all the subsequent but ones you know I've left. With with the Marine, the first Marine, you kind of got to give the actors in that movie a pass because the, the, the script was horrible. Well, the thing is, though... Script all, was fine. Script was horrible. All the, all the great dialogue went to Robert Patrick anyway. Yeah, it and so it's like... So that was that. But Halo okay. is, an, is another one on my best. I didn't know how they were going to pull this off. And w- after seeing that first season, I'm like, I want more. And not only that, I see the possibilities... For other things. And one of them is I am a massively huge Mass Effect fan. Yes, he is. I love Mass Effect to death and it, I will play the games till I am blue in the face. Or at least until I pass out or really have to use the bathroom. But the fact that they did Halo with such justice, I could see doing a Mass Effect series in the same vein and not movie, but as a series. Okay. And oh my God, it was amazing. Halo really took it up another level, so I was like, oh, this is great. Another one, The Boys Diabolical. Mm -hmm. The animated season of The Boys was just, it was hilarious. It's it's what you expect from The Boys. Yeah, and I'm not putting The Boys Season 3 on there, but because ongoing series, like I said. So then we have to go with another Amazon Prime show, The Legend of Vox Machina. Okay. The critical role cast doing an animated series is amazing. And now that I know a season two is starting in January, I, I really am looking forward to the new year for that. Willow was definitely making the, the yep. list because it's it has been top tier each episode. Sandman. Sandman was making my list. The, the last episode that they tacked on didn't really do it for me but i was okay with the rest of the season okay. so i'm like all right wednesday yes i i couldn't do a top five or like i had to do what was just my top right 
So Wednesday has been a breakout. General Ortega did an amazing job as Wednesday. I was hesitant going into it, but seeing her as Wednesday worked along with Christina Ricci. So it's like seeing the two of them both there, it it hit nostalgia, but at the same time, it it worked for me. Right. And I have to give it to this one. It, I took it out of order because of the dates, but Bel Air. Okay. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air reboot that's more serious. I wasn't sure how I was going to receive this. Uh, like, uh, It's like, really? like I grew up watching the original. And with the Will Smith controversies and everything, you're like, do I want to? But I mean, this came out before the controversy. Yeah. So, but it's like watching this, I was like, holy shit. This is gritty. This was, it, it just, it hooked me. And I like, I'm stumbling over my words because it was, I was actually that impressed with the show. I didn't expect much. And I mean, I thought maybe we'd see some cameos from other people. And there were a couple, but it wasn't to the extent where I was like, you know, I'm going to miss John Avery. Because, I mean, Come on, he's Uncle, Uncle Phil. Phil was the best. And now seeing this, it was like, okay, not the same, but, but this works. What? And I will give it to House of the Dragon. Okay. Because it's where everybody had issues with Game of Thrones last season. I didn't. I know the books are depressing as hell. I was not expecting a happy ending in any way. And this is more Targaryen history. Right. So it's it this was something I was like, I was I was happy about. I didn't hate it. You know, I'm gonna go with worst okay. next. So worst, like I said, no particular order, but I will categorize this as the number one worst. Okay. Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. Yeah. I mean, when when you don't have the rights to the actual like Semerillion and the right. backstory, you, you, that's 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 a tough tough one to pull you, off. Yeah, I just I couldn't get into the na like National Treasure series. Just I was like I I just can't. Did that have anything to? I mean, other than the title and like you know, did it? Did I gave up on it? That's how I like if I give make, up on a show. I, not if they made reference, but. Did they acknowledge like the John Voight and I, Nick Cage character? In all honesty, no? I it it's so for, forgettable. I've forgotten, <laughs> and it's still going. That's the thing. It's not like it's a, a long thing. It literally just started on December fourteenth. Okay. So um, it's like I just I tried and I couldn't. I that's why it's on my worst list. And those movies weren't bad movies. No, they but were enjoyable. You know. Pitch Perfect Bumper in Berlin. Why are you doing a spinoff of Pitch Perfect with Bumper? You know, if you, you're you going to do a Pitch Perfect spinoff, I could understand doing the guys acapella group, the treble makers. Like, that would have been something a little more interesting because mm -hmm. you have more of a dynamic. But following Bumper, and I mean, the actor's great, and I've seen him in some um, awesome stuff. But this was just one that was like, can't do it. It's just, it's not hitting it for me. I'm going to say, now this one's going to be a little bit of a shocker because I'm going to say Naomi. And it's not that it was a bad series. It's the fact that it got canceled just as it got good. It's like it had those moments where it was like, I was starting to like hope and think it was going somewhere. It didn't follow through. And just as it's getting, it's... It's hitting its stride. Oh, by the way, we're canceling the show. Yeah, that, that's usually how, how how TV works. Just when, you know, a little rocky start, fine. Not every show is going to start off, you know, million of viewers each episode. You start off a little bit, you know, kind of like our podcast. Yeah. We have our one like. We got to build our fan base up, and then we'll take off. Yeah. That's how TV works. And unfortunately, the, the money people are like, oh, my God, it didn't have 10 million viewers on the first two episodes. Cancel it. Yeah, well, that and also it was the the acquisition of Discovery to screw so everything even, up. Don't even start with yeah. that. Yeah, but and now the last one on my worst list. It's not for any reason because that it's not that the show was bad. It just happened to be the timing of when it was released. Mm -hmm. How I Met Your Father. Yeah, it's not that the show was bad, but at the same time, it's like you're trying to capitalize on 
how big How I Met Your Mother was, but the problem is it's still associated with Bob Saget being the narrator, doing Ted's voice for all of the years until it's yep. fi- like towards the very end. But now with the passing of Bob Saget, it it was still it felt like it was still too soon mm-hmm. and like a raw dig. So that was it made it harder for me to watch. So that's the only real reason why that one even ended up on the worst list. Oh, did you hear what Netflix is doing? What show they're bringing out? No. We have that 70s show. Oh, oh. The short-lived that 80s show. Now they're doing that 90s show. You know, I was disappointed that that 80s show got canceled because I was actually loving the show when it was airing on television. And that 90s show, the fact that they're still following the characters from that 70s show, it has potential. And I saw the trailer. It's interesting to see what they're going to do with it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm I'm skeptical but I'm like, we still have Kurt Wood Smith and oh, yep, the mother, the mom, Kitty. Like, Kitty. I hate when I blank on her name, but it's just those two characters, Red and Kitty, being back and being an integral part of the show. It to me was just like, okay, you've got my attention. Now, well, as now, lo- now they're dealing with the grandkids. So, yeah, uh, but I mean, I'd, I'd give it a shot. I'm going to give it a shot. So, I mean, it's going to be something to look forward to in 2023. Now, my mid-tier list. Hang on. Hang on. To um, give you, answer your question, the actress who played Kitty Foreman, Deborah Jo Rupp. See, and it's such an easy name, too. And I am so sorry that I completely blanked on Deborah's name. You know, she's an amazing talent. And... Her as Kitty is hilarious every single time. Her vo- the the laugh kills me. Yeah, that the awkward laugh of just the placement of where it is every time she does such a great job with that. That it's like you've got me interested as long as Danny Masters does not appear on the show. No, he's not. Thank God. I, I, they they said that. Uh, well, not that they said, but with all the shit going on around him. Listen, I I'm, think it's yeah, it's a good thing that they kind of distance themselves. Which from. is funny though because Laura Prepon who I don't know if she's still with Danny Masters brother but all three of them were sci- in Scientology. So I have no problem saying this, Scientology is a scam. It is not a religion, it's a cult. Yeah. It's up there with Nexium. So they they need to not be calling themselves a religion. Yeah. So and they shouldn't own all the property that they do fucking tax write-offs. You know, it's shit like that that aggravates the hell out of me. But I'm going to go into my mid-tier list. I'm not going through everything because right. there were certain things I didn't get to see. Okay. Now, She-Hulk, I actually listed as mid-tier. Really? Yeah. What, it, What, in your opinion, made it mid-tier? It's, it was good and it was funny, mm-hmm. but there was something it felt like was missing. And I think it was also because the all the rumors of who was supposed to be on there and popped up. Charlie Cox popping up on there, Daredevil in the suit. I loved it. Yes, that was was hysterical. I had heard rumors that got my hopes up of we were going to see Jessica Jones make an appearance. And I love the character of Jessica Jones. Kristen Ritter, amazing as the character. So I think there was a little disappointment there in that. But it was also like I, I didn't hate the fourth wall break. I loved it. I loved the fourth wall break to a point. But it was just like that last thing, the last episode where the big battle, where it's like you're just seeing a whole bunch of people fighting. And it's like it's more about her being the attorney. And yeah. they address it in the show. Very first episode, like she even said, first episode, this is going to be more about a this is going to be a lawyer show with superheroes sprinkled on the side, which it was. It was. But there was that moment where it's like everyone's battling in the courtroom and like, here's Hulk. You're just it was yeah. like. I felt like that was jumping the shark. I, I, I it, That's the only reason why it's mid-tier. Because if we get a second season, I'm going to watch it. Yeah. And I'm sure it will enhance the viewing. I I kind of agree with you with the... Um, it was certain episodes that just kind of took me out. I like, I mean, as a whole, what do they have? Like, how many episodes? Seven? I, think, I think it was eight or nine. Eight or, as a whole... I like, I do, 
there wasn't really any episode where I went, meh. I do agree with you at the end, the last episode, where it, it kind of was like, okay, we don't really have an ending for this season, so we're just going to throw everything in there and then bring She-Hulk into the real world where Kevin Fe- 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 Feige? Feige. Feige is a computer. Yeah, the fact and that it was, was Feige like, was a robot yeah, was... with the baseball hat on. Yeah, but it was it was fun because was fun. The, the the fact that it basically was like the a, it was a comment on the fact that all the Marvel properties have been so formulaic. Yeah, and but, I mean, I mean, She Hulk was breaking the form the formula for it, but it just like I said, there was just something. And when it comes to the series, the series can have something that's really good. And I mean, I was down on Miss Marvel when it first came out. I was, and it was, but it's hard for me to relate to a teenage Pakistani girl yeah. who's fangirling over Captain Marvel. Right. But, I mean, I can understand a power fantasy dynamic, that I can understand. But it was the the family dynamic, I don't have a relationship to that. So I really don't have any place to really comment on it. Mm-hmm. But it felt like the show picked up, especially when they went, to go visit the grandmother. It was like when that was the moment, that show like really found its roots. And like She-Hulk has those moments where it feels like it 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 has it, but then it has those moments where it comes out of there again. Yeah. I mean, it was completely ridiculous. The guy that, he was a wannabe Batroc the Leaper, the, the frog idiot with like the rocket boots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like you can tell. I can't even remember the character that well. I think it was just called the Frog. Yeah, wasn't it, it? I don't know, but it was still. It was old school. Or something? Some yeah. some nonsense, but it was one of those moments where it was like things that took me out of it. Although I will say it was great to see cousin Larry Appleton back. Cousin Larry. Yeah, <laughs> like that was just like that to me. The cameos and stuff that were in there were work, but that's the only reason why it's mid tier. Andor was is mid tier for me, but that's only because it was the pacing. You know, I knew it was a, a rebel story. It wasn't like we were gonna get Jedi. We weren't gonna see lightsabers, but um the character of the bar guy. Yeah. Ribbit and Ribbit. Oh God. See th- like stuff like that. Now Marvel's had tons of characters with horrible names like that, but Ribbit and Ribbit, fuck you. Yeah, like that, I think his name was Ribbit, and his catchphrase was "Let's rip it." Yeah. Now, I'm gonna say three shows that I'm gonna say mid tier, mm-hmm. only because they're either either it was short or it got can't or it like it's finding its roots or it's gotten canceled. Okay. One is Endgame. Okay. It, the show came off great. It had Marine Bakken. That was definitely a huge selling point for me. So I was like, okay, great. They cancel it within the... I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? When you have a show that's good and going strong, you cancel it. Yep. Like, that's the thing that makes me take out and be like, you know what, mid-fucking tier. The Winchesters. It's still finding its legs. And I'm, that's why I can't say anything really too harsh about it. But it's giving... It, I gotta give it more time. Well, see, with a show like The Winchesters... Coming off of the supernatural, people are going to want like you get so used to those characters in supernatural, you kind of expect to see more of the same from the Winchesters, even though you know it's a different yeah set. But, but the the fact that they're following the parents early on, I would have actually more preferred when they were trying to do Wayward Sisters, right. that pilot of the girls, and that would have been more interesting to me. But then again, I'm also somebody who really wanted to see Green Arrow and the Canaries as an actual spinoff. Yes. Because they've left that plot thread fucking empty. I can only hope that since Flash is the last of the Arrowverse, because Superman and Lois, which I don't know how it happened, but that's in an alternate Earth, even though motherfucker was there... At the end of Crisis, and when all the universes were combined. Yeah, yeah, because they even said the Super Supergirl came from a different 
dimension, uh, different yeah, she, Earth. Yeah, she was in a different Earth. And they said when Superman came out, he was in a different Earth. Yeah. And, but now they came together, but Diggle's still showing up. So it's like, you're confusing me now. This can't possibly be a different Earth. Like, but you're saying it's different. Uh, it, you're losing me. And I'm going to say mid-tier for Walker Independence. Yeah. But that's only because it's like, I don't know if there's more to it, it coming. Or, or like, it's not bad. It's just... I don't think it's hit its stride if it's continuing. No. And that's the thing for me. If it's like when a show hits its stride early on and it finds itself, that's where you know you've got it. Right. When it takes time, like Smallville season one took some time for me to get into it. It took till season two. Right. And once it gets that, once it gets to that point, and I'm willing to give things a chance when you know they're trying to find their stride. So that that's the mid tier. I'm not going to do more because there's some of them that I still haven't had a chance to watch. Right. You know, I wanted to check out a league of their own on Amazon. I just haven't had the time for it because an expanded series from the movie could be very interesting. So I'm, I'm going to give it some time. I mean, there's other things I, like I still didn't watch that interview with the vampire series. Yeah. I, I'm like, I want to, but I need to find my own right. little thing. So before we do movies, though, okay. let's get your wrestling ones. Any like, uh, there, there's only a few because I want to do, I want to do an anime list, and right. I know you're not gonna really be able to contribute to that. And the wrestling one, I've kind of been out of it, so I can't really contribute too much, if anything. Well, right now the only ones that really stand out in my head were recently in AEW. They've uh. They have a trios title where it's basically a tag team for three of them. And right now it's Death Triangle, which are the Lucha Brothers and Pac. They are the trios champion. And they're fighting the Elite, which is the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Okay. And once again, more factions, more right. factions everywhere. You know what? I don't I don't mind because in the factions in AEW, they're letting their their guys go they're letting them have a like a, a match without everybody else being at ringside which is fine you want to have a faction you you want to be part of the jas jericho appreciation society <laughs> which is funny as shit fine but they'll let their guys come down have a singles match and the rest of them won't be at ringside and okay so they'll let them go and do their own match which is cool i like it um the matches these men put on are amazing if you want to watch great, just holy shit wrestling, watch the trios tournament that they're doing. Only thing I would say, they're doing it at best of seven. Oh. And each match had its own, <laughs> excuse me. When did, when did everything become World Series rules of best of seven? I don't know. I mean, it's a best of seven and each match had its own stipulation. Like, the first match was a regular straight-up tag match. And then uh, last week, it was a, um, I think, no DQ match. So you can use whatever you want. And this past Wednesday was a Falls Count Anywhere match. Um, Death Triangle went up three matches to none. The Elite came back. Now we're all tied up going into next week or this week is when we listen to this. Um, match seven. I enjoy the matches. They are amazing to watch. Plenty of holy shit factors. But I think seven matches, a seven match feud. With the same people. With the same people. And it's like week after week after week. Okay, guys. Maybe you cut it down to five. That's the five. That, that'll work. Seven matches, I feel personally it's a little too drawn out. I mean, you want to see storytelling in your wrestling. And I am so for a long-term story match. But when you do it seven consecutive weeks, me personally, again, not, not knocking the product, not knocking the quality of the matches. I'm just like, okay, guys, give me a little break. You know, maybe maybe a best of five. That'll work. Best of seven. 
Listen, I, I'm typically a fan of three matches if you're going to do a rubber match where it's like one win, one loss, and here's the tiebreaker. Okay. You keep going past that. It's like you at least give them some time in between before they re right. restart up again because we've seen it for years. So that's why it's like I like when you said best of seven, I'm like, I oh, know. fuck. I mean, and it, again, it's an interesting concept. Best of seven and wrestling. I'm like, oh, let's see what this is. But then you realize you have seven fucking matches. And again, these guys can go, but, you know, Rampage, um, Dynamite is only a two hour show. Yeah. You know, two uh, hours is more than enough time hours, to tell more than enough decent storytelling, decent story, which is what I enjoy. It's plenty of time. You, you do a little backstage. Yeah, when you stuff. go over two, when you're yeah. going over two hours, if it's not a pay per view, it feels excessive. Yeah. WWE. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, really, and that's that's where they lost me. WWE lost. Put a three hour raw on. No, I'm like know, I, don't, I don't even have enough time yeah. to sit for a three hour raw. But I, I will say thank you to ups and downs for what culture wrestling. Simon Miller. Yeah, Simon Miller. We give you one. Oh, absolutely. The biggest of ups. You get the golden up. You get the golden up, Simon. Be yeah, because you're the only thing keeping me up to date as to what the hell is going on. And you give us warm fuzzy feelings in our tum tum. Yep. <laughs> I actually got my buddy Danny a shirt that says yep. I have a warm fuzzy feeling in my tum tum. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, Simon, you helped him with a Christmas gift. Thank you, brother. Yep. But no. Uh, a two hour ramp, uh, dynamite, perfect time because you get to have like four or five matches in there. Little backstage vignette action. Rampage. It's only an hour, but in that hour, you get a lot of action. Okay. Which is why, in my opinion, I believe AEW has the better product right now. The best of seven match, mm, you know, maybe. I mean, I love it that they're doing it and they're, they're putting it on free TV. Yeah. Okay. Um. Maybe if they would have started it in January and you could have had the main best of seven at uh, Full Gear or um, All Out, whichever one happens in March. Man. Or, or maybe even do it where the best of seven culminated at the Grand Slam. Yep. Uh, well, what's the other one? No, that's all I really have. Right that's now. it? Yeah, I mean, I watch it and I was like, ah, oh, this is amazing. What's next? I have <laughs> a touch span of a gerbil sometimes. I, mean, I apologize. <laughs> I would say more the attention span of a hamster. I like triples. Yeah, Mr. Hamster Pellet Productions over here. You're... Oh, I see. <laughs> Our movie is all their shit. It's <laughs> like my mind. It's shit. Yeah, it's like, I'm like trying to give you a quick <laughs> plug there. It's like, got to get better. We got to get you a little more rolling with the shilling. We do. Uh, I, I yeah. got to get Swifter on the uptake. Sorry. Yeah, man. I know. I'm going to have to be a little better when it comes to like making TikToks and like yeah. if it's still around. Or just reels, YouTube shorts. I have to start getting back into the production, but it this year was more of a reset year. Yeah, learning to walk again. Uh, <laughs> but no, so I want to hit because I, you know, I'm a huge anime fan. Yeah, he is. so I want to hit my best and worst. These are all things that came out in 2022, mind you. But there are a couple of series that are the next season. I try. I didn't want to go into split seasons. For the most part, because there is one I didn't put it on my list because it was only the second part mm -hmm. came out in 2022 and how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom is an honorary mention of being my one of my most favorites. You would think, oh, kid gets transported to another world. It's going to be the typical same old thing. No, he's actually interested in fixing the infrastructure, getting their budget on point, finding issues to the food shortages. So it's like, instead of him taking on a demon Lord, that's taking on the rest of the world, he's rebuilding the foundations of a country, which is kind of like tackling a demon Lord, but it's doing it in a way that isn't the usual. So it was like, that to me was like, okay, this one stands out and was head above the others. And I've watched the full thing repeatedly, but now my best list, no particular order. I got to start off with the second half. Spy Family. Spy Family has been amazing. 
And I mean, Spy Family, This I think it, the whole thing came out this year, but they broke it up into two parts. So beginning of the year, end of the year. But Spy Family, it's the character of Anya Forger is the most adorable little kid who happens to be a psychic, mind you, because I'm explaining this to Mike now. Yeah. So the kid's a psychic, but she's been adopted by a spy father for his mission to infiltrate a school to get close to like the head of like one, one of the other side, the other country's mem- leaders. But he needs to also find himself a child and a wife. Didn't they do this in, in the movie and it was called uh, Black Mr. Widow? No. It kind of, but no. Spy Family is, this is an adorable little kid. They don't, like, the father's a spy, doesn't say he's a spy. The daughter ha- that he finds happens to be a psychic. She's not telling him that she has psychic powers and can read his mind. Then he finds the mother. The mother is an assassin. Like, high, top-tier assassin. But she's horrible as a housewife. (laughs) So it's just, they make one of the cutest families. And by season two, when they get their dog, Bond, because the little girl loves a spy TV show, so she names the dog Bond. Bond. It's it's one of the most adorable things, especially because she talks with the ooh-ooh voice. So she says things incorrectly, and it... It's literally like listening to a little kid that's very young trying to sound like an adult where you're like, oh, this is adorable. So it's like that one is like up there. The first season of Chainsaw Man just finished. It is top tier animation. The story is great. Very gory. Not for the faint, not for kids, mind you. Yet I got, I got, I've, I've picked up those books and I sent them to my nephew upstairs. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Arc just came back after Bleach That's a family hiatus. friendly book, right? Oh, what, Spy Family or Bleach? No, no, no Bleach. Thousand Year Bloody War. Whatever. Blood War Arc. Well, that's the last chapter of Bleach because Bleach came out was part of the big three anime in the early 2000s. And Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece. One Piece is still over a thousand episodes and it's still going. It's over twenty. It's like I think it's going to end up being something like twenty-five to almost thirty years. Like they've they've announced an ending for it, but it it's a it's a commitment, and I've made that commitment, and I I don't regret it whatsoever. I regret that the dubs don't come out faster because I prefer you the dubs. Why he's still single, ladies and gentlemen? Well, that's actually more of a breakup, and I've it. How are you going to date when you can't when you're showing up on crutches? But well, it'll, that, it'll make them easy to run away from you, that's for sure. Ladies, I am single though and looking, but that's a whole other issue altogether. <laughs> but no, Bleach Thousand Your Blood War arc is they came back with a fury with the animation style. The animation has been up to a level that you would think it was movie quality animation. So it's oh my god, this is great. Another one of my top ones is Trapped in a Dating Sim, and I'm shorting it because I have to shorten that title because the title keeps going, and I do not want to have to keep saying the whole thing. It's one time. What is it? So I know what you're talking about. Trapped in a Dating Sim, it's hard to be a mob character. I, I think it's that. It's like, basically, though, it's the main the, the guy that gets killed after playing a dating sim, his sister forced him to play because... She didn't want to beat everything herself, so she made her brother do it. He ends up dying because he didn't eat while he was beating the game, falls down the stairs, ends up dead, going to go get food. And he basically ends up in the game. can remember everything from the game. The thing is, he's not the main character. He's a background mob character. So he doesn't... Even though he's technically the main character, he doesn't see himself as the main character. He keeps pushing himself off as, oh, he's just a side character. He is fucking wrecking these people. And it's not that he's overpowered. He just knows these guys are shit at this point. So you're like, oh my God, this is great. And then Demon Slayer, the Entertainment District arc, because they kind of broke the second season up into arcs. So that's the only reason why I'm really picking that one 
it's Demon Slayer's been top tier, and I have to go with part two of Attack on Titan, the final season, because now we have to get a season, a part three mm-hmm. of the final season. And that's going to take a while. And Attack on Titan has been, and Demon Slayer have been two of the top anime for a while now, because they're just, they're dominating whenever English, English speaking countries hear about anime. Demon Slayer's been one of the big ones that they bring up, and then the other one is Attack on Titan. Titan. You know, other than old school like Dragon Ball Z or Super now. But now the worst, a couple of cuckoos. That just sounds bad just from the title. Yeah. It's like a bad porno. Oh, no. It's two families have kids on the same day at the same hospital, and the kids get switched. So they find out that the kids have been switched at birth and they decide we're going to have them get married to each other so we don't have to break up the family and like switching kids and whatever. I Um, take it back. It doesn't sound like a bad porno. It sounds like a bad soap opera. TGI Friday Channel 7 sitcom. Yeah, it it's not it's not it's it it's something you'd find on Guilty Pleasure. I watched it and I was falling asleep during it. So that tells you something. Another one, which season two of Ari Ferretta. Basically, the entire class gets transported to another world. The main ki- the one kid gets like attacked by one, like betrayed by his friends, and he gets trapped, get- and he becomes way too overpowered. Uh, you're like, oh, you got to be kidding me. It is the ultimate harem overpower fantasy you have ever seen walks away with like a whole bunch of girls that keep following him and he's got and he's so overpowered it's ridiculous and it's not even like the story's good they don't really go back to hey the students are all trying to fight to find a way to get back home no it it, they, it that's gotten lost somewhere another one like the strongest sage with the weakest crest supposedly Oh, this character has like the we. It's like he's so powerful, but he's got the weakest power. It's like, no, it's backwards. He is so strong because his crest has been, everyone told him like, oh, this is the weakest one. It's like, no, it's the most powerful. So you're like, this is stupid because they're getting to this point. The devil is a part timer season two. Basically, the devil come and is like fleeing hell and like him and one of his one of his demons they end up working like part a part at a part-time job <laughs> where the devil is working at a like a Japanese version of a McDonald's. <laughs> the first season was amazing, but it took so many years for the second season to come out. The second season just kind of dragged a little bit for yeah. me. So I was like, uh, and then more than a married couple, but not lovers. AKA married with children. No, this is actually You'd find this interesting since you have an education background working with kids and stuff. This is a school program that they take the kids in the classes, they pair them up, and they make them live in an apartment together, and they score points on their rela- like how the relationship goes. So it's like a marriage training. That's kind of like what they used to have kids do if you went to like the Catholic school and like in high school, where they gave them like a sack of flour, treated Here's- like a baby, treated like a baby. Nowadays, they do it with, like, the digital dolls so they can kind of keep track of it. Yeah. But, no, this is, okay, here's, you're supposed to be a husband and a wife, but if you earn enough points and you end up at a top tier, you can switch partners, and you'll be able to transfer over. The two main characters have an interest in other people that are both partnered together. So they're trying to get their scores up, and it it's so awkward. It's like... It, it's guilty pleasure watching, but at the same time, you're also sitting there like, no, they, these people can't possibly be this naive. And yeah, they are. So it's, you, that's why it's, it's on my worst list, but it's, it's guilty pleasure watching. So I can't say worst, but I can say guilty pleasure. Okay. So I want to switch things up now. Catch them up. Let's start with the worst movies of... <sighs> 2022 now we're gonna i have to say of what you've seen because i know you haven't seen a bunch of movies I haven't seen a bunch of movies, but 
from what I've seen, and actually I was going to work from left to right, but you want to jump into worst of 22? Yeah, Because again, cause I have it broken into the best of, the worst of, the why of. Yeah. We'll go through your... The, meh. But, okay, let's start off worst of 22. Again, this is no particular order. This is just my opinion. Uncharted. Really? Yes. Try. I bought it. I watched it. I'm like, why am I watching this? Couldn't. I was like, nope. Sorry, right, couldn't do it. Oh, wow. Like, Tom Holland really had me on that one. I mean, granted, yes. When I picture Nathan Drake, I picture Nathan Fillion. Yeah. So, but Nathan Fillion's a little getting too old to be Nathan Drake. Yeah. Even though we, it seems like the character of Nathan Drake was pretty it much... It was based on him, yeah. Yeah, so... Okay, so what else you got? Um, Sneakerella. What? I had to watch it because one of... I watched it when I was working... No, what what is this? Because I'm like I even it's I have basically heard of this. Cinderella with Ma- a sneaker. Yeah, you you ramp it up to like modern time, and instead of losing the glass snipper, snipper, <laughs> slipper, <laughs> shut up. She use, loses a is it glass sn- snippers. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me again. Why did I agree to come on this show? Because we've been friends for I'd say two decades now. I want a good reason though. Yeah, exactly. Easy promotion talk. for your things. Okay. And yeah, for the one person who's listening. Thank you, Mom. Uh, <laughs> that was only one show, mind you. We, we've done others since. I know. Although my, my buddy Doug, he, he listened to the last one. He liked it. Okay. So thank you, Doug. Yeah. Um, no. It's basically um, Modern Family. Um, the daughter, you know, instead of glass slippers... <laughs> It's a sneaker, and I fell asleep while I was watching it at work, so I got paid to go to sleep. Thank you. <laughs> um, Jurassic World uh, Dominion, the last one. Uh, I'm like, you took a good idea, and you kind of went sideways with it, and Michael Crichton is like, I gave you a good idea, but you fucked it up. <laughs> uh, the, that, the, I like the one line in it where... Uh, you have the new cast, like uh, Chris Pratt and uh, Dallas Bryce Howard meeting up with the originals. And um, Chris Pratt goes, I made Blue a promise. I'll bring back its its child. And Ian Malcolm looks at him and goes, you made a promise to a dinosaur? And Pratt's like, yeah. Like, it's a normal, everyday thing. You have conversations with dinosaurs. I promise I'll get this back for you. And, yeah, so... <laughs> That line right there should sum it all up for you. Okay. Um, you're probably gonna say the fuck is wrong with you when I say this next one. Okay. And a lot of you out there, I'm like, this fucking guy is an idiot, and you're not wrong. But anyway, I um, usually say that anyway. Say that anyway. Um, I'm putting Thor: Love and Thunder. Really? There was parts of it where I was getting into it. Like, yeah, I know it wasn't supposed to be like, you know. It was supposed to aim for Goofy, but... Well, they've realized when it comes to Thor, yeah. you can't be serious. No, I mean, you, you could be a, no, 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 a no. little serious. No, no, no. Look, look, you take the tone of Thor. Thor was Masters of the Universe. Yeah. It, all the stuff in Asgard was great. All the stuff in Attorney is great. You come to Earth, and what the fuck is wrong with you? Thor, Thor a Dark World? was not a good movie. The first two Thor movies are, in my opinion, the worst of the first couple of phases of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, they are the worst. Thor Ragnarok showed them where to go with Thor. See, I like the first Thor. I agree with you on Dark World. It kinda, I was kind of swayed back and forth. Uh, Ragnarok I liked. Love and Thunder, there were good parts in it. But in my opinion, just as it was getting good, just as you kind of like, okay, that was haha, goofy, whatever, you moved away and it was getting good. And then, oh, we went right back to goofy again. And I was like, that for me personally, that just ruined the flow of the movie that I was getting into. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I'm sorry. I personally, I'm not too crazy about it. All right. So that's why. And rounding out my top five, again, no particular order. The Monsters. Okay, that one's a little older. That one didn't come out this year, so... No. Really? Really. 
Well, I picked it up this year. Yeah. But, <laughs> uh, it, that one was last year. It wasn't. Are you sure? Yeah. Anyway, well, um, I watched it. I got maybe a quarter halfway through, and I just turned it off because um, it was. I found it very boring. Mm. Didn't I mean? Yeah. Okay. Great night. You understand why? Uh, Grandpa and Herman. Well, why Grandpa didn't like Herman? But I was like, mm, eh, okay, next. What what else do you got for me? Come on, Rob. You're you're better than that, Mister Zombie. No, he's not. That's probably not. No, no. I I I have I've watched Rob Zombie's movies, and I want him to stick to making music. Yeah. It it's he has good ideas, but I don't think he should be the one executing them. No, he could maybe write it, come up with the idea, and give it to somebody else. But they are twisted as fuck. Yeah. Okay. So I'm now. Out of it. Okay, so let's now go for your why. Okay, again, no particular order, just my opinion. As I was going through the releases of 22, some of these titles caught my attention. and went, why would you do that? Uh, Medea Homecoming. We just had too many of these fucking films. Yeah, I will say the Medea franchise is... Over. Is ver is the equivalent of what Ernest was back in the day. Only Ernest was good, but towards the end, Ernest was jumping the shark. Like when they went, Ernest goes to Africa. I didn't see that one. Yeah, there's a few of them that like later on. I only have a handful of them, and they were the earlier ones. But you could see where yeah. the the shtick gets old real quick. Right. So again, Medea enough. Okay. Uh, the remake of Father of the Bride didn't need didn't need actually technically a third remake didn't need it. No, but the original one and the one with Steve Martin were fine. Leave them alone. Don't yeah. touch them. Um, Jeepers Creepers: The Return. The first one was all right. It was a good popcorn flick. Second one, me. Okay. Third one, I'm still trying to figure out what the hell's going on in the third one. And then when I heard the return, no, you don't need a return of Jeepers Creepers. Let the franchise go. It, it, it ran its course. Let it go. I was okay with the first two. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with them. I, I think if you're going to do Jeepers Creepers returning, you need to wait the 27 years. Yes. Bef- in between the movies. Yes. The same way that they kind of did that with it. Yes. Where it's like, we got the made for TV one, and then it's like, 30 years later which is fine it worked we got the newer ones which it worked it gave, it it's like you needed time to cleanse the palate right cuz you you had the original and when did the original come out in the 80s 90s uh it was early 2000s the original one with with uh Jeepers Creepers no 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 it it was in the 80s yeah yeah so you gave with it you gave it time okay and people realized okay this was a TV movie from the 80s okay and Although it had an saw, amazing cast. Oh, it had a great cast. And Pennywise... Uh, um, Tim Curry. Tim Curry. It was amazing. You realize, okay, TV movie compared, compared to blockbuster movie. You know, big big screen movie. Yeah. You know you're going, you, you can't really compare the two. Different budgets, different times, everything else, which was fine. I enjoyed it. No problem. Um, bones and all. Do I really need to see people eating each other for the hell of it? Not really. I mean, they're cannibals. Yeah, great. They're in Ohio. What the fuck do you expect? Everybody, you're either redneck or you're a cannibal. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I, I don't even know if it takes place in Ohio, and anybody from Ohio who listened or who might listen, I apologize. No, he doesn't. Uh, I, I really don't. I, <laughs> honestly, I mean. Speak up. You turn the mic. You keep tur- physically turning the mic because you have to hold it. I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. What can I say? Uh, Again, if anybody from Ohio is listening... Don't eat me. What can I say? <laughs> oh, and here we go. And and the number one, even though I have it as number two on my list, the number one why was this made? But after I tell you who made it, you're going to be like, oh, that's why. Okay. Titanic. Six, six, six. Let me guess the Sci-Fi Channel? No. Really? Yes, the Sci-Fi Channel did not make this film. But when I tell you who did, you're like, uh Who? I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> I, and I, I read the blurb, and it was, you know, a replica of the Titanic 
goes out to the, on the 110th anniversary of the sinking, goes to the wreck site. And strange things start happening on the ship. Oh, God. Brought to you by the Asylum. Oh, I am. Mom. And I, as soon as I said the Asylum, I'm like, oh. But I really shouldn't say shit because I actually have the Asylum's phone number in my uh, cell phone. <laughs> okay. I called them once or twice. All right. So what else? That was it. Oh, so you have. I only did five. Okay, but you're, the next the next part of your list. Next, uh, I want to go to the me. Part of 22. Again, these are movies that, if you have nothing else to do, turn it on. Uh, these aren't movies I went out of my way to really watch. Um, number four, Top Gun Maverick. I felt it was too much of a shot-for-shot retelling of Top Gun. Um, the bar scene was pretty much a carbon copy of the bar scene in the original Top Gun. And you have a bunch of millennials... Knowing the words to Great Balls of Fire, Dr. Stretch. <laughs> uh, I just thought it was too much of a remake of a shot for shot. Not a horrible movie. Again, if it's if you got nothing else to do and you want background noise on, put on Top Gun Maverick. Actually, if you want background noise, turn this sh- on. Yes, put make sure you're playing our show in yeah. the background. But you kind of want to listen to us, so. I would say maybe if you're on the boat or on a train going to or from work. But anyway. Um, we're, we're, a, we're a lovely distraction. We are a lovely distraction. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great tagline. <laughs> the Blue Lagoon Podcast. A lovely distraction. Um, if someone leaves that in the co- in a comment, I will absolutely. Yes. Like, I will make that the tagline. Yes, please. If If people will email in. I will make that the tagline Which for the is, show. It's a great tagline. A lovely distraction. Copyright yeah. that. We're still looking for a tagline for the show. So Right now, it's a lovely distraction, unless you can come up with something better. We're a lovely distraction. We're, we are. We are we're lovely. Okay, um, so. <laughs> the Adam Project. It was a Netflix film yes, with Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds. Uh, where Ryan Reynolds plays... Um, I can't remember exactly what he was. but He's he was the so, future version he's of... He's the future version, but I can't remember what he was doing in the future. Yeah future version of himself he goes back in the past to meet his younger self to help him from doing something um most time travel stories most time travel stories again not a horrible flick if you got nothing else to do and you heard our podcast already check it out um here's one that you might say what the batman as a mid-tier you're saying as a meh as if i got nothing else to watch let me put it on no, actually, that one does not. You know, a lot of people sit there and they want to say that the Batman was amazing. Listen, Matt Reeves is a phenomenal writer. Mm-hmm. He has a great concept for it. I will not say this is one of the best. No. Uh, it, you know, it's one of the better right. DC live action movies, but it's not part of the main cinematic universe. Who knows what the fuck is going on anymore with that? So. Felt like a three-hour Batman film. Yeah, it the pacing is yes. slow. It's, sl- it's again not saying it's a horrible film. Uh, you me, will fe- you feel you the time feel, though. You you do you you feel the time going on. It's and... like being in the movie theater watching Infinity War. Yeah. and having to pee. Yes, halfway through the movie. Yes, that, um, that's the best way I can describe. Yeah, it. that that's a pretty fair assumption. But again, you know, not putting a knock on it, I felt. At points, it was very drawn out. I you, you filled the time. You're like, oh my god. Okay. Uh, uh, Moonfall. Okay. Halle Berry and um, the guy who was in um the Conjuring movies. I can't remember his name. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. No. Oh shit. I can't remember the guy's <laughs> name. He was in a. Uh, his. Fuck. He the Conjuring. He's he he played Ed. Warring in the Conjuring. Um, can't remember the guy's name right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm not looking it up for you the yeah, way you looked it up it. for me. It's yeah, like, thanks it's a lot, buddy. It, it, uh, listen, you got to remember something. It's a little easier to look up one, like Deborah Joe Ruck than it is well, for... Just type in Moonfall. I don't want to look at Moonfall. He's too lazy to do it. Anyway. No, it's I don't want to look at Moonfall. It's like... It, it, you know what? Moonfall, it, it had its moments. Uh, the whole premise of the film was the moon is an artificial structure brought here by... Uh, extraterrestrials and 
Yeah. Why are you doing Jeopardy? Because <laughs> it, it sounds like it, you're waiting for a Jeopardy answer. Okay. With the extraterrestrials, you're like, really? Well, you know, I, I didn't write the film. I'm just giving a brief recap. I know. It's just, it It was one of those movies that it was on my radar. I saw the trailer. Trailer looked interesting. And then I just sat there and I was like, yeah. I don't have the time, the energy, or the patience for this shit. You know what? It's, again, if it's on HBO and I'm flipping the channels, I'll watch it. Okay. Um, oh. I usually pick it up in the middle, same part where right. I always got it. Um, And rounding out my meh of 22, Black Adam. Okay, I can definitely see Black Adam yeah. being a meh. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good. It wasn't it. good. Okay, so and your best, my best of twenty two, Studio Six Six Six. Okay, Foo Fighter film. I enjoyed it. Okay, had its own niche. It told a story. It was in. It had its niche. Niche, niche, whatever. Told I have a, a niche. <laughs> you have a niche. Yes. <laughs> No, uh, no, that was actually a Girl Meets World reference. Um, uh, Will Friedell coming back as Eric. He's like, Nietzsche. Instead of saying niece, he says, I have a Nietzsche. Uh, <laughs> uh, told its story. Was it entertainable. Entertain, entertaining. Which story? Studio 666. Okay. Uh, told its story. Um, you're like, wow, okay, this is this is good. And, you know, some of the stuff in it, a little gory. Some of the uh, the action, like the action parts, and like some of the things, you kind of go, "Whoa, really?" Okay. Um, but you know, it was good. R.I.P. Taylor Hawkins. Uh, you'll probably agree on this one, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Yes, enjoyed it thoroughly. Doesn't really need much of an explanation why. You know it. Um, the Amazon movie, The Samaritan, with Sylvester Stallone. You put that on best. I liked it. Okay. I again, I I you know what. I kind of picked up the twist coming along about halfway through. Wanted to see if I was correct. I was. Um, I did not have a problem with the film. I enjoyed it. Okay. Uh, the Weird Al story. Weird. Oh. The Al Yankovic story. Yes. That movie was fucking hysterical. It, oh, it, it, basically absolutely. Basically what it is, you know how Weird Al makes parodies of songs? The producers and the writers said, we're going to parody Weird Al's life. Yeah. When I heard they were making it, I'm like, yes, who are they getting to play Word Al? And I heard Daniel Radcliffe. I was like, not a fucking chance. He looks nothing like Word Al. And then I saw a picture of him with the curly hair and the mustache. I'm like, holy shit, he's Word Al. <laughs> and then I saw it, and I was like, holy shit, this movie's fucking hysterical. <laughs> and they need to make a Wolfman Jack biopic with Jack Black as Wolfman Jack. That's all I have to say. Who knows? That may be the next Fine. parody of, of that'll be life the story. top. That'll be my the movie that should be made in twenty three. Wolfman, the Jack story, played by Jack Black. Okay, perfect title. And rounding out my top five for the best of twenty two, gotta go with Clerks three. Okay. Um, I I hope. I mean, I like the whole universe, but I feel this story kind of puts a. Nice little bow on top of everything. Yeah. Uh, again, I don't think there's any one real story where he wrote. I went me. Um, I just kind of hope he moves away from Tusk. Okay, <laughs> I kind of hope. Like he, he. I mean, love Silent Bob, love Jay. You want to put Randall and other characters popping up from time to time in other of his films? Great. Just you know, work on Masters of the Universe season two. <laughs> Yes, I said it, Kevin. Come at me. Make it make it happen, guys. Um Yeah, so uh those are my my best and worst and my why and my miss of uh twenty two. Okay. So I'm gonna go right into my worst. Well let's have it. Okay. Cheaper by the dozen. Yes. The Disney remake of Cheaper by the Dozen, it it felt unnecessary. Yeah, that, I would have put that into a why category, like yeah, why no. did you do it? But I either or why or worse yeah. off it works. My number one okay. worst movie, Morbius. You know what? I was I, I was shocked it wasn't on your list. Dude, I, as I was making my list, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And I just totally forgot about it. <laughs> Morbius, I'm sorry. Add that number six to my list. Morbius, oh my fucking God. Now, now I put Samaritan on my list. And, okay. that, and that's because I figured out the twist. 
I figured it out early on. Yeah, I mean, so did I. But I still enjoyed the movie. But it for me, when I if I figure out the twist that early, I have that moment where I'm sitting there and it feels like the sixth sense, where I knew within the first fifteen minutes of the movie what the twist was, and I didn't want to fucking sit through the rest of the movie. Samaritan, I wanted to sit through the rest, but that was more because I wanted to see where the action was going. Yeah. But it, other than that, it was like, eh, no. I wanted to see, I mean, I, I you kind of figured it out. Again, this is okay. a Stallone flick. You're not going to win any Academy Awards. I wouldn't say that. I mean. He did. Okay, fine. Rocky. But, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> after Rocky, you're not really going to get many uh, Academy Award nominations. Hey, but um, <laughs> I liked it. I uh, and, okay. you know. So. Netflix movie Do Revenge. Felt there was a little bit of a letdown. Do? Do Revenge. Okay. Two girls basically doing, re- taking part in revenge on someone else for the other person. You know, they did, they made a movie about that. It was called uh, Dirty Deeds with yeah. Norm MacDonald. Yeah, they've done a lot of those. It's it's a classic story. Yeah. But it just, it, it wasn't resonating for me, even though it had Maya Hawk in it. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it fell a little short, and it didn't get, like, there wasn't enough hype for it, so it fell to the wayside. Right. Jeepers Creepers Reborn. We went over that one. Yep. And Jurassic Park World Dominion. Yep. It, you know, the nostalgia hit me, but it didn't hit me hard enough hard to enough. make me sit there and want to watch that movie ever again. Yeah. I mean, I bought it. I watched it. It's sitting yeah. on my shelf collecting dust. Now, my mid-tier. Okay. Disenchanted. Okay. You know, the first one was great. I loved Enchanted, but Disenchanted, it it f- didn't carry the same weight, and the nostalgia factor just wasn't there for you're me. You're trying to capture lightning in a bottle twice, yeah. which you're told can't do it, can't be done. Yeah. Now I'm going to, this one, because it came out in two separate parts, South Park, The Streaming Wars, and South Park, The Streaming Wars Part 2. Okay. They were, South Park has kind of been dropping the ball when it comes to some of the stuff. And I think it's they're stretching themselves too thin. Yeah. They're on HBO. They're also on mm-hmm. now Paramount. It's like, Jesus fucking Christ. Pick one goddamn platform. Yep. Fantastic Beasts. The third story. It it just, I was thankful they ended as, 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 as Ezra. Yeah. Ezra Miller's thing. Yeah. I don't even, his name gets caught in my throat with what kind of a horrible human he is. Yeah. You want to throw up when you say his name. Yeah. It's like. You've ruined the Flash. He he's like he's like the Voldemort. He is the one who shall not be named. Yeah, he. It's like you are ruining the Flash. Yeah, I wasn't crazy about him in Justice League before all this shit came out. Yeah, because I'm like, you're not Barry Allen. Yeah, Barry Allen is smart. You're not. Yeah, and so now, I didn't do a lot of for my mid tiers, but I put Marry Me, the Jennifer Lopez movie. The No. Okay. I watched it. I sat there and I was like, she's still not a great actress. She's not. But at the same time, this felt like her life story almost. And I'm happy that she's found happiness with Ben Affleck. Again. Again. But you know what? Maybe this time it it's the right thing. She's on a I think she's on a quest to uh, have collect more rings than Tom Brady at this point. Yeah, but the thing is, I think her and Affleck work for some reason. It, it'll be nice to see how long they last. I I hope they last a long time because they have the history that it should work, but you never know. You know what? But that was the last of my mid tier. If the two of them are happy together, God bless them, all power to them. Yeah. But she should stop making movies because yeah. she can't act for shit. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, J-Lo. <laughs> ben, don't kill me. I'm sorry. Now, my top movies. Oh, uh, here we go. Okay. Now, I have a top 10. Because I couldn't do, because there's been so many movies that came out. Oh, let me let me hear them. Let's have them. Number 10, 10. Violent Night. Very good. Had no choice. This one, it came right out the box, and I'm okay. like, this is the Santa Claus I've always wanted. Okay. Now, number nine, uh, I, since I wrote my list out of order, Hocus Pocus 2. Okay. The nostalgia factor got me, and it's actually a really good sequel. Okay. Because they did take the time between the years right. in between. So. That one to me. Now, number eight, Thor, Love, and Thunder. Okay. Okay. Number seven is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Okay. Number six, Prey. Okay. You know, a, a good predator story is a good predator story. Yes, it is. And this one was a lot further back in time, but it was done so well. 
number. Did, excuse me. Did Shane Black have anything to do with that one or no? I don't even remember. Like okay. I, don't, I don't think I even looked at it to see who was right. involved. I, the fact that it involved Native Americans and was respectful of the culture and stuff, that to me was like, wow, they went above and beyond. Okay. So number five, Disney Strange World. I just recently saw that it is amazing and Disney was not even pushing it, which is a shock. But I think it's all because of the backlash that they get whenever like a lot of conservatives have an issue where it's like there's gay characters in a kid's movie and the parents in this one are just so accepting. Hell, even the grandfather's accepting. He finds out that the the main kid, it's like he has a crush on another guy. It's like, let me tell you how to get him. Didn't even bat an eye as to whether he was gay or not. I was like, this was accepting for everything it was. And then the story on top of that was absolutely brilliant. So it's one of them that I had to put it in there. I didn't really want to do a Disney if I didn't have to. But that was one that it's like between Hocus Pocus and that. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Number four, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Okay. The tribute that they did, the respecting Chadwick Boseman. I mean, knowing what the other story would have been if Chadwick had stayed, had been alive, this worked. And I really enjoyed this one. So that's why it, it made it to number four. Okay. Number three is Clerks 3. Okay. In, and, it, I mean, that one really, it, it tugged at the cockles of my heart. It did. I, it got me tearing up. It and did. it takes a lot to get me to tear up at a movie. Number two, Glass Onion, Knives Out. That's another one that should have made my list. Yep, but it, it, it honorable was, mention. Yeah, it was it was so good for being so predictable, but it's it it's worth it. And number one, Weird, the Al Yankovic story. Yep, that one had I it it was a surprise out of the box. Was not expecting it to be as good as it was, and I loved it. It again. Mm-hmm. When you hear Daniel Radcliffe as Word Out, you're like, no, nah, not a chance in hell. But when you see it, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Now, I mean, I didn't put Black Adam on any of the list because it just, I I, I just couldn't give myself. I a put n- it as, like I said, I put it as a meh. If it's on, watch it. Yeah. For me, it was like, what the fuck? Like, there was too much controversy around Halloween ends, and I lo- I actually really enjoyed it. But it, it wasn't like a top thing right. for me. Like, would me... I heard all the hype about Black Adam. I heard that, oh, Henry Cavill's back in Superman. I wanted to see what the hype was about. So I got it. I was like, eh. I waited for it to come out on HBO Plus. I was like, or Max, Max. Or whatever the fuck it's called. Before it becomes Max. Before it comes Max. But I was like, meh, okay. Wasn't horrible. Wasn't what I expected. But hey, now everything's hitting reset, so who cares? <laughs> Yeah, that that's that's the problem. We don't know where the DC universe yeah. is going, so it's just it it's hard to really put them on a top list right. if you're not giving top tier. But I mean, that's why Peacemaker what is like yes. top tier when it came for shows. Like that was just like Although I like how the Justice League showed up at the end of Peacemaker. Go uh, fuck another fish. You know what though? That that was the one moment that I didn't hate Ezra Miller was Yeah. Isn't that true, though? It's like, Fuck you, Barry. It, it's like, yeah, it's like, okay, it's like he's pointing out the fact yeah. that it's like, wait, the rumors are true, aren't they? You fuck bitch. Fuck you, Barry. Yeah. And because I think we all wanted to say fuck you to Ezra Miller. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. We you do, know, comic do. book fans have been pissed off enough with this little shit bag. I don't care whatever you want to identify as. It's you can't keep yourself out of trouble. Yeah. You're getting arrested. You're breaking into people's homes. You have problems. Get into therapy. And also, James Gunn, if you're listening, please, if you're going to do a new Flash, can we get red-headed Wally West? Yes, please. The, he's the one that everyone from the 90s knows, especially thanks to the Justice League animated series. Yep. Because one of the greatest moments... In that entire series. I know exactly where you're going. Yeah, of course. He doesn't want to take his mask off, and Batman he, just looks at him. It's like, Clark, everybody. He, yeah, Clark Kent, 
Barry. It's like Barry it, Allen, it, Diana it, Prince. It, it's like he's just everybody's name. But it was like Clark Kent, Wally West pulls off his own mask. Bruce Wayne. It was like whoa. He just re- like he went to town on that yeah. one. And the fact that it was also he was voiced by Michael Rosenbaum. Yes, was Lex Luther. Yeah, it. I was like, whoa. They they got it. I was not expecting him to be as good as he was, and that to me was just like, holy shit. Yep. So that has like the gravitas that I want redheaded Wally West because you can do that, and then we don't get we don't have to see the Iris West's love story right. with Barry. We can follow him. In a whole series of adventures. So James, Mr. Gunn. Hit us up, man. Yeah, it's like, this is what we would like to see. This is what will move the masses. And especially since he has said that his inspiration for the DCEU, he's gotten that some of the inspiration from Justice League, the animated series. Good. Even if he goes and taps into Justice League Unlimited. Even I didn't better. have a problem with Unlimited. I liked it show booster some real love because squeaky wheel my friend squeaky wheel squeaky wheel come on boost the blue and the gold man yeah. boost the gold blue beetles make it happen well we just got we're getting the blue beetle movie so we and now let's just have a quick little what are you looking forward to tv or movie wise give me just one movie and one tv show all right movie wise i'd have to say uh flash because i want to see what they do and i want to see keaton Back in the cape and cowl. I can definitely agree to that one. Uh, TV show, bittersweet as it is, I'm looking forward to seeing how they wrap up The Flash. Okay. Um, That's about it. You know, anything else come down the pipe that catches my interest, I yeah. see when it comes out. But uh, off the top of my head, The Flash, because I want to see... Not for any other reason except I want to see Keaton in the suit again. And I want to see how they wrap up The Flash. Yeah. I mean, I've got way too many shows that I'm looking forward to, especially, like I said earlier, The Legend of Vox Machina is getting a season two. So that right off the bat, it's early on in the year. Get it, like, I have hope that 2023 will be a better year Yeah. when you see a bunch of stuff coming out that you like. Uh, you know, DC is not giving me much to hope for. No, it's not. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in Blue Beetle, but it's like, is, is that it, going to be live action or animated? Live action. It's actually um the star is the main kid from Cobra Kai. Oh, you're doing the Jolo. Uh, yeah. He's do he's Jaime Reyes. So it'll be interesting to see what how that all turns out. But when it comes to movie wise, I'm like it, it's mostly anything in the in the Marvel in the new phase. Yeah. I, I'm actually gonna say it's more currently the one I am most highly anticipating for 2023 is Ant-Man and the Wasp and Quantumania. Right, because that's when they're really introducing, again, Kang. Kang. It, but it's not even about Kang. It's the fact that I'm looking forward to it because I have loved, more than I ever thought I would, the Ant-Man franchise. When they when I first heard they're making Ant-Man a movie, I wasn't getting my hopes up because I was like, Ant-Man? I go, really? Yeah. Uh, I But again, you know... I was like, okay, let's see what this guy has to offer. I watch it, and I was like, holy shit, this is a fun ride. Let's oh, yeah. see where it, it takes you. It's Scott Lang, and it's Scott Lang being played by Paul Rudd. Yeah. It's like, Lang was the more likable Ant-Man anyway. Yeah. Because most people didn't like the original Ant-Man. No, Hank Pym, he, he was an asshole. He beat his wife. He was and, all, he was the, he became the Yellow Jacket. Yeah, and if you watch... Uh, I think it's Ultimate Avengers. The um, yeah, like Marvel's Ultimate Avengers. Yeah, the, uh, it's the like, uh, yeah. animated one. You see, he's kind Hank, of a dick. You see, no, yeah, kind of he is. And I think mm-hmm. at one point he smacks, uh, Janet around. Yeah, like he, he backhands her, which he did in the comics, yeah. which made everyone hate him. Yeah. But Scott Lang is just one, like the caring father, right? But the funny guy, and it's like they always know, right? It's like you know that he's that character that it's like. I'm I'm hoping that we get the narration again though. Yeah. I need the recap. Mm-hmm. It's just it it is something that it's like it I'm hoping, it's like fingers crossed that we're gonna get that again. 
But that's what I'm looking forward to, at least the, the, the top movie and TV series. I'm going to just stick with Legend of Vox Machina early on for the shows because I know it's coming. There's too many anime I have that yeah. I'm looking forward to. You know, it there's too much good stuff that has potential. So I don't want to crap on anything because we we can talk shit about a lot of the stuff. Flash has had some down moments, but I'm looking forward to how it all wraps up. Yep. And I'm hoping that it do, they can tie up some loose ends in the CW Arrow cinematic universe because that the TV universe it feels like they got shut down yeah. too early and granted yes, 8 years of Arrow. Nine years of The Flash, and it's not even a full eight and nine years. No, it's not. They're the two longest running. Legends of Tomorrow, absolutely phenomenal show. Black Lightning was incredible. It It's like they really did push the envelope. Batwoman was not my favorite. No. I will say the one thing I am truly dreading in 2023, Gotham Knights. The video game? The TV show. The making, game's out already. They're making a TV show about that? Yeah. Is it based on the video game? I think we talked about this last time, but it's not based on the video game. Fuck it. It really, it's Batman's adopted son that we've never met. Yeah. You, you yeah. know what the, you know, they're doing the same thing that, that they did with Birds of Prey. Yeah. They're like, let's do this and let's. Although Birds of Prey was a better it was series. A better, it was a better series, but. With Gotham Knights, it's going to be like, okay, we're doing this. Take everything you know and forget about it. And we're going to hope that you know it, because that you buy into it because we're using, oh, it's Gotham. It's Batman. No, it's not. It's a disaster waiting to happen. Could it, I be wrong? Yes. No, it, it, it just from the trailer that Give I've it, seen, it's welcome to the shit show. It's a dumpster fire. I don't think it'll last more than being generous. Six episodes, yeah. so I like round numbers. Okay, well, you know, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy, the th volume three is coming out. And we've... I hear that's supposed to be a tearjerker. Yeah, so we've got a lot to look forward to. So, resolution for the new year, I don't make them. It doesn't make any sense, because most people just drop them. Yeah. The only resolution I've made that I've stuck with is I'm stopping making resolutions. There you go. So, I think that's everybody's resolution. Yeah, it should be. It should be. You know, new me, new year, new me. Bullshit. New year, new me. No, I'm the same asshole I was before. Exactly. So, you know, we have to all understand that just because the new year's coming, we can hope for better. But the only way we're going to get anything better is if you just make that change yourself. Right. So, you know, you want to go and lose weight, don't make a resolution to just do it. Make a gym Make a gym appointment. Just go to the gym. Go to the gym. Change your habits. Want you have to want it, not as a resolution. It has to be something you want on right. your own and you're willing to do. Because if you're not willing to keep up with something, you're not gonna, whether it's nothing will get done. Yeah. If your diet is not sustainable, you're not going to be able to keep it up. If you're not, if you don't have a schedule that you can work out and you're not going to overdo it, you're never going to do it. You're gonna you'll kill yourself with it, like. Every gym goer typically does when they first start off. You just sign up at the beginning of the year. They go in. They're gun ho guns blazing. They get hurt because they've overdone it. They're sore. They take two weeks. They come back for like a day. They're gone by February. And then maybe they come back in like May or June. Yeah, bikini season. Yeah. I, oh, I got to get my beach body. Um, Little pro tip. You want a beach body? Start working on it in September. You know what? I some people say that I have a dad bod. I don't have a dad bod. I do not like to say I have a dad bod because you're not a dad. No, I prefer to call it not a dad bod. I prefer to call it a father figure. <laughs> okay, do you have a dad bod? No, I have a father figure. Okay, George Michael. Thank but you. um, no. See, I don't have faith. <laughs> well, that we clearly know. But no, I. I would be nice. I I have the cuddly frame. Even though with with I have the muscles that I need to get back they're once just, I get back to the they're, gym, they're, they're covered in a uh, protective coating of a uh, cuddle right now. Yes, they, they, my muscles are all being cuddled right now. <laughs> and so, 
it, you know, I'm, I'm giving off a little excess body heat right now, but it is the winter time, so. <laughs> and he has his winter coat, folks. Yes, I do. And um, on that note, we're going to take you out, wishing you all a happy new year and a prosperous 2023. Let's enjoy 2023 together as we go forth into the entertainment and see what is actually good, what is bad. And why the fuck are we watching this shit? It's a lot of why the fuck are we watching this. <laughs> I am the Blue Dragoon himself, Daniel the Dragon. You can reach us at Dragoon's Lair Podcast, all one word, at gmail.com. That's Dragoon with two O's. That's Dragoon's Lair Podcast, all one word. Dragoon's Lair Podcast at gmail.com. Dragoon is spelled with two O's. You can find me at Blue Dragoon 13 on t- TikTok, Twitch, Instagram. Uh, actually, you can even find me on Hive and Tribal Social now. Yeah, I'm, I've am i added a few extras. And um, yeah, check out my link in, if you want to find out where you can find me. And you can also see anything I eventually post on YouTube at Blue Dragoon 13. That's the number 13, not the word. And I'm signing off with you got me mike shiavo king hamster pellet himself follow me on instagram at hamster pellet productions hit me up on twitter at hamster 17 and follow me on facebook you get all my information i do plan on uh filming at least three uh short films coming up in 23 so i will be posting audition notices so if anybody out there Want to get in on the hamster pellets. And you are in the New York, and in the Staten New York Island area. area. Uh, follow me, hit me up, ask me questions, and I will get back to you. That's right. So, with that all said, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, everybody. Take it easy and just enjoy your streaming experience before they overcharge you. Yeah. Until the next time, people. Later. <laughs>